This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Can you get to the point where you say, Lord, this is not my life. You gave it to me. You've got a purpose and a plan for it. Help me to plan the course. Help me to plan the course. How are you not wanting to have something to do with the only one who really understands the plan and the course for your life? Get ready for change. The message of grace is coming to a city near you. Join Creflo Dollar in Los Angeles, California on January 27th and Houston, Texas on February 23rd and 24th. Seating is limited, so register now. Log on to www.creflodollarministries.org to check out the full 2023 Change Experience Tour schedule. Pick up your phone and call the number on your screen or scan the QR code right now to register. See you in your city. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. Now, as we look at this today, this is God's promise and God's willingness and commitment to guide you to the path that you were born to go down, guidance to the place and the destiny of your life. And believe me, I know well that sometimes you end up in places and you, you think, where is God? What did I do? Are you mad at me? Did I do something wrong? all involved in his plan to get you and to prepare you so you'll be ready when you arrive at that destination in your life. And the church said, amen. amen. So let's begin this morning in Psalms 119, 130. I want to use this as a text this morning because I, I truly believe that if we're going to start down that path, we're going to have to start with this. And we have to really lay hold of this. There's something about the Christian getting in God's Word and coming to a place where you desire God's Word. And you kind of get to the place where you stop trying to have church and church becomes the place where you express your relationship and your love for God. In Psalms 119, verse 30, let's read it out loud together. He says, the entrance of thy words give light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. I believe that true clarity starts with the entrance of God's Word. I believe if we're going to see clearly, I believe as we, if we're going to see the right dispensations and see through the lens of grace, all of that starts with allowing the Word to be a part of your life. So the question you've got to ask yourself, and, and here's how I study Scripture. I read it, and then I immediately ask myself, now, where do I fit in this? Am I doing this? Am I not doing this? Have I neglected this? That, I'm not just reading the Word like you would read a novel. I'm reading this Word because it, it becomes the checklist for my life. And when I read something, I don't want to just read over it and say, well, that's for somebody else. I want to read it and I want to ask myself, is this true in my life? You know, a while back I asked myself, am I satisfied with the amount of time that I'm spending in the Word? It changed my life because the answer was no. And I think a lot of times people are trying to pursue certain things from God, and they're even trying to pursue God, but you're doing that without allowing the Word to enter. The entrance of that Word will bring light. And I believe it starts there with every person. Having a desire to want to get God's Word, not just at church. Of course, this plays a big part, but also in your personal time. Even take what you get at church and spend the rest of the week breaking it down. Spending the rest of the week looking at each scripture and asking yourself, how do I fit here? And how does this scripture fit with me? So that we're no longer praying, playing church, but we know how to live this genuine life with the scripture. The genuine life with the word of God that we read and what we're meditating on, that it convicts us, that it convinces us, that it changes us, that it challenges us until we get to a place where we're saying, 
Oh, now I'm enlightened. Oh, now I have clarity. Oh, now I have understanding of this application in my life. You know, it really blows my mind to see any Christian sit back and be critical of another Christian because you become a part of the team accuser of the brethren. I don't even see how you have room for that. You got so many issues and you can do a podcast criticizing some other guy. You're saying you're perfect while you're criticizing some imperfection, imperfection you found in somebody else's life. And before you do that, back up. Dude, you got plenty of issues in your life. How you doing a podcast on some other preacher or something like that? At least he's doing something. At least he's in the game. At least he's in the game trying to do something. So why would you want to become a part of team accuser of the brethren and just make it harder for him? But you know what? Some of y'all need this. Some of y'all, in order to be prepared for your destination, you need a good kicking from somebody that just, just make you go there. Because he knows when you get to your destination, you're going to be surrounded by those kind of people. So you got to take that kicking course before you arrive at that destination to make sure you're, you got the necessary fruit and the necessary equipping to handle the situation. So you got to understand, you guys were born at this time because God knew you were supposed to be here now. You're a special type of person for a special type of generation, and you're going to be able to handle it, praise God. People that were born 100 years ago, they couldn't handle what's going on right now. But God has equipped you to be able to handle it, to deal with it, to minister to it, and to make a change. You're supposed to be here right now, today, at this particular time. You can handle it. You can handle it. So what is this commitment to us? Let's begin and just allow these scriptures to speak to our hearts this morning. Psalms 37 and verse 23 through 25. Uh, what's God's part? Uh, what is his commitment in our guidance? How many of you want to know the plan of God for your life? Amen. Amen. I want to know the plan of God for my life. The greatest, greatest day of my life is when I discovered the plan of God for my life. Wow. But there were a lot of things that went to. I didn't necessarily want to go down that path. And there were some things that I had to really get into and, and, and understand. Look at this. Psalms 37, verse 23 through 25. He says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way, though he fall. So there's going to be some falling going towards that path. Are you understand? Though he fall. You know, though your greatest lessons come from sometimes from your biggest mistakes, your biggest, biggest mess up become greatest, your greatest messages and sermons and, and life lessons come from looking at you. And somebody want to call you an expert. Yeah, you're an expert in, in falling. <laughs> You know, the first time I went skiing, I, I struggled. I, I struggled with this. Well, I struggled with a lot of things. First of all, I'm the only black guy on a ski slope. So I'm figuring I ain't got no business here in the first place. <laughs> Secondly, the little, the little thing that picks you up and takes you somewhere, I, I, I thought they were going to stop and let me get on. <laughs> so when I got on, I'm hanging halfway off the thing, and I'm like, you can kill somebody going up this high and all that. But they taught me how to fall because they, tell, they told me, now, if you run into somebody, you could be sued. I said, well, I, I learned how to fall. You know, I became an expert in falling. <laughs> I learned something. I learned how to go that ski slope anymore. But sometimes you've got to recognize some of the stuff you go through. That may be the thing you need to know to help you get where you need to be. I never thought, I would have never believed that the Holy Ghost would be the one behind leading Jesus into the wilderness. But the Bible says Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil by the Holy Spirit. He led him into the wilderness. I wonder where he's going to lead you. See, we got this little daisy mentality, this on the clouds, uh, sipping a Coca-Cola mentality. Where's he going to lead you? God's going to lead you to the places that are going to prepare you for the destination. Amen? He says, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Look at the next verse. 
I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Now look at this in the Amplified Bible. Uh, Psalms 37, verse 23, in the, in the Amplified Version here. He says, the steps of a good man are directed and established by the Lord when he delights in his way and, and he busies himself with every step. 24, though he falls, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord grasps his hand in support and upholds him. Turn to your neighbor and say, God's got your hand. So no matter what happens, God's got your hand. God's got your hand. Well, that's comforting to me. God's got my hand. God's got my hand. He's got me. He's got my hand. Boy, that's so comforting to me. God's got my hand. So the next time you fall, remember, God's got my hand. And sometimes you feel like I done fell so deep, ain't no recovery. God's got my hand. And look at this. I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the uncompromisingly righteous forsaken or their seed begging bread. I've, one scripture says, I've never seen the uncompromisingly righteous uh, hungry and forsaken that God will never, ever abandon you because of your righteousness. Say out loud, I'm the righteousness of God. So no matter what happens on your journey to discovering the plan of God for your life, God's got your hand. So you don't have to be afraid that no matter what happens, God's got my hand. He's not going to let me go. He's not going to forsake me. He's not going to leave me. Now, for, the, for, for a moment, it might seem like, uh-oh, but just remember, God's got me. God's got me. There have been several situations in my life where I simply heard those words in my spirit, I got you. I got you. I know it seems like something really, really bad's going to happen, but I got you. There's nothing that I allow you to go in without my hand gripped to yours. Hallelujah. Some of you don't even know how you got in the situation you're in right now, but God's got your hand. Amen. You remember that old song, put your hands in the hands of the man <laughs> who steals the water? That's all I remember, but <laughs> God's got your hand. Amen? Amen? Now, look at Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah 10, verse 23. God's got your hand and he orders your steps. God's got your hands, and he orders your steps. God's got your hands, and he orders your steps. Now, now, now some Christians say, well, that can't be God having me step here. Remember, the Holy Spirit led Jesus in the wilderness. Well, that can't be God to have me here, here. Remember, the Holy Ghost led Jesus in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. Well, why would God let this happen? Honey, he trying. He knows you got to take certain courses before you arrive. Some of y'all think you get saved and bam, you just show up. Well, you're just going to mess up a lot of lives because you don't know enough. I mean, one of the greatest deceptions is that we think we know more than we really know. And that's why I want to always be a student. I don't want to ever get to the place where I think I, I know something and have to realize, well, I, I guess I didn't know what, what I thought I knew. Thank God. Lord, teach me how to be content where I am, trusting you and believing that you have my hands. So if I'm in an uncomfortable situation, remember what Paul says. Paul said, I learned how to be content in no matter what situation I was in. Lord, help me to continue to learn how to be content regardless of whatever the situation I'm in. When I'm up, I want to be content. When I'm down, I want to be content. When all my bills are paid, I want to be content. When they're not paid, I want to be content. When the IRS sent you a letter, I want to be content. Help me to know how to be just fine trusting you in no matter what situation it is. Why? Because I know wherever I am today, that's not where I'm always going to be. I am on my way somewhere. <laughs> 
I'm on my way somewhere. I'm on my way somewhere. And I guarantee you, wherever you are right now is, is just part of the equipping so you can be ready when you arrive. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Now, you ask the question, why are my steps ordered by the Lord? Look at this in the NLT, the New Living Translation. Now, this was pretty fascinating to me, that uh, the, the way of, of man is not in himself. It's, it's uh, put this up. Everybody look at this. Look at this. I know, Lord, that our lives are not our own. Now, stop right there. Can you recall sometime in your life, or maybe you've said it yourself, this is my life, and I can live it the way I want to live it. All right, let me, let, me, let me help you. It's not your life. And that's the problem. First of all, you think it's your life, and then you proceed to try to live it the way you want to live it, and you, you wonder why things ain't working. I know, Lord, that our lives are not our own. We are not able to plan our own course. Now, think with me for a moment. To now realize that your life is not your own and that you need him to help you to plan your own course. Think about the guy who says, this is my life and I do, I, I'm going to live the way I want to live. Let me, let me show you the problem with that. Here, here is where the... Here's where the problem comes in, is you're trying to live your life the way you want to live it, and you don't know how it's supposed to work. <laughs> you don't know how it's supposed to work. And that's the sad thing about it. And, 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 and believe me, we're living in a generation right now where it's just filled with people, this is my life. I want to live like I want to live, how I want to live. I want to be what I want to be. I did it my way. And it's going to be like gravity. You can never win over gravity. You can, you can go on top of whatever building, but when you step off, gravity will always win. And see, you've been conditioned to just, you know, live by the moment. And, and social media will deceive you. Social media gives you a picture of everybody's happiness. But as soon as they posted it, the thing, the, the thing we got posted, it, it, they went back to the same depression argument. People who are ready to kill themselves will post something with a smile. <laughs> and now you compare yourself with, with that. You're following somebody who's trying to plan his own life. And look at where it ends up. Now, here's what God wants. Can you get to the point where you say, Lord, this is not my life. You gave it to me. You've got a purpose and a plan for it. Help me to plan the course. Help me to plan the course. How are you not wanting to have something to do with the only one who really understands the plan and the course for your life? And you're so busy trying to get on somebody else's path while you keep going by past your path. Let me, let me talk to you for a moment here. What happens is we... In, in search of the plan and the will of God for our lives or trying to find purpose in our lives, when you X God out of that process, you leave it up to you to choose the path, and most of the time, you're right there at the will of God for your life, and you choose the other path. Now, here's what happens. The other path takes you on a detour that may take two years of your life, and then you get back to that path again and watch this, you say something telling me to go to it. No, and then you choose your own path, and you go on a four-year detour. Now you've lost six years in detour, in detour. And you keep coming back close to the path because God loves you. You keep coming there. But you don't want to have nothing to do with him. You don't want to have nothing to do with anything that contradicts your plans, your plans. So if God, if God called you and equipped you and gifted you to do something, he's going to be the one to lead you to the path of you being able to use that gift and plan. But no, 
You've been busy comparing yourself amongst yourself, and you're so busy trying to be like somebody else, all you've been doing is pursuing a cheap copy. And God's trying to get you to go down that original path for you so you can be an, a, a very valuable original. But you won't do that. You're so busy trying to be like somebody else. What tickles me is sometimes when I talk to, to, to our, our younger kids, they are, they're, they're actually deceived at the style they have that they originated it. <laughs> and I'm thinking, little boy, you ain't originating nothing. You're just copying somebody else. You're too, you're too, you're too afraid to originate something because God wants you to be that original. There's, a, there's an original part of you that can change somebody's life. God has a plan for your life. That's going to be a world-changing plan. That's going to impact your life like, like your life and somebody else's life. Well, why don't he just go and give it to me? Because you ain't ready yet. And if you enter into the destination unprepared, you're going to mess up somebody else's life because there are other people involved in that destination. There are other people that are scheduled to meet you at that place. So what happens? Old script just continues to maintain old problems. Yeah. When is somebody going to get bold enough to step out and say, you know what? What are you saying, God? What do you want me to do? Imagine if we were still under the old script and the old dispensation of the law. Oh, I don't have to imagine. We were there. And it wasn't nice, was it? And so now, me and some other people begin to talk about this new script of the gospel of grace and all hell breaks loose and people think that you're this and that. And you got to be prepared for that. When God prepares you to deliver a message, you got to be prepared for it. I'm, I'm prepared for people talking about me, dogging me out, making fun of me. I, I spent almost 20 years preparing for that. So now, when I teach the gospel of grace, and somebody wants to make a, 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 a derogatory, negative comment about it, don't bother me. I'm thinking, it's out there. You got to decide whether you want it or not. I'm going to go get an ice cream cone. What's up? <laughs> that ain't going to keep me up at night. That ain't going to cause me to do this. That's a, you know, then that's not going to cause me to, to, to come and defend myself. You know, I, I get tickled at some of these people. You know, certain things, when people talk about you, certain things don't require a response. Cert, certain, there are times when you just need to shut up. Come on now. You already know it ain't true. It doesn't require a response. I'm going to call her back and let get her told you don't talk about me. Just, you, you, you know, I, I told you that word of the Lord that came to my wife, tend to your own business. Some of y'all are in everybody's business and stressed out and don't know why. Because you're taking on somebody else's stress. Let me go leave that alone, y'all. Some of y'all, I don't want to hear that. I didn't come here to hear all of that, you know. I know, Lord, that our lives are not our own. Now, look, now apply that to you. Do I know that my life is not mine? I'm not able to plan my own course. You know how powerful it is when you come to a place where you can admit, I am not able to plan my own course. The issue is you think you are. <laughs> you think you are. I don't need God. I don't need no church. <laughs> I don't need no pastor taking money from me. That's your excuse now. <laughs> God, I'm not able to plan my own course. You know what happens the day you realize that? You get out of his way and allow him to take you because he already got your hands and say, come on, baby, let me go in front, follow me. That's what it means to yield. Let me go in front, follow me as I escort you. See, I want to be escorted to my, the path that God wants in my life. So when I get there, somebody said, what are you doing? This is where God has called me and escorted me to do. And everything you're looking for in life, everything you lack in life, 
is waiting at that place called there. As believers under grace, the Word of God reminds us that we no longer live under the law. Instead, we should allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us. The Holy Spirit gives us a divine advantage in every aspect of our lives. Learn how to yield to the guidance of the Holy Spirit in Creflo Dollar's five-message CD series, The Spirit-Led Life. When you believe in Jesus Christ, He's going to transform you from the inside out. He will give you the ability to do what pleases God. Believe Jesus and His finished works. Attend to believing what He said. When you put your focus and consideration on what the Word says, Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what the mortgage person says. Have faith in God. If you can see the invisible, He can do the impossible. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. When you think about what could have happened to me, what should have happened to me, and now look at what's available to me, that's enough for me to tear something up right now all by itself. I got to give him the glory. He saved us. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. We want to be sure we are living according to what God has taught us about giving. And we understand that giving and receiving is a spiritual law. It's a reflex of God's love. And I'm so glad that Taff and I begin to understand how to walk in this principle, but we give not out of necessity, we give out of a cheerful heart. We give because we're grateful and we're thankful to what God has done. You know, I, I want you to pray about uh, becoming a giver into Creflo Dollar Ministries today. And if this ministry has blessed you in any way, consider sowing a seed of any amount and we will greatly appreciate it. Thank you in advance for your support and God bless you. Your financial donations into this ministry work all over the world to change countless lives. If you'd like to support our efforts to save the lost, you may call in or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org today. God bless you. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.